Good morning. I'm Dan Pon, Executive Director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Wow, to see 4,000 people excited to be here in Austin for KubeCon Cloud Native Con. We are a community of builders. This is the Fulton Center in Lower Manhattan, where I live. It's a neighborhood that's constantly under construction. And developing a train station is one kind of building. Software infrastructure, which is what we're working on here together, is an equally important form of engineering. The point of events like this one is about building community. Now, each of us are members of different communities. Lower Manhattan was the target of a terrorist attack last month in my community, in front of my son's school. And I believe that the best response to an attempt to destroy and disrupt is to continue developing and continue building our communities. So, thank you. So let's look at this community around us. We are aiming to construct the software infrastructure for the next decade. And a shout out to Tim Hawken of Google, who's in the audience, his quote that these are exciting times for boring infrastructure. Maybe too exciting. This is the cloud native landscape, and to fit all of these logos on one screen means that they are getting pretty small. The challenge of developing this map is that all of you keep coming up with innovative new products and projects. Now, the blue squares are the 14 CNCF projects. Let's talk about the communities around them. How do we measure community? So one year ago at this event in Seattle, CNCF had four projects, Kubernetes, Prometheus, Open Tracing, and FluentD. Fast forward to today, CNCF hosts 14 projects. Together, they represent an open source infrastructure that works on any public, private, or hybrid cloud. Now, let's zoom in to Kubernetes. Compared to the 1.5 million organizations on GitHub, Kubernetes is number nine for commits and number two for authors and issues. And if you're curious about it, number one is Linux. As the Linux Foundation's Jim Zemlin says, Kubernetes is the Linux of the cloud. Now CNCF has been investing in a couple projects this year to better measure our community. The first is available at devstats.k8s.io, and it visualizes participation across many metrics. This is uh, the robot commands that people type into GitHub, but if you take a look, there's a lot of other dashboards. We're having a birds of a feather boff meeting for this Friday at 3.40 p.m. We've already expanded the content to five of our projects on the way to all 14. Another way of measuring is cross-cloud, an intra-project continuous integration system. It supplements the CI each project is already using on their own, and there's a boff for this one tonight at 7 p.m. Now, let's zoom out and look at some other metrics of our community. These are the Google Trends graphs showing what people are searching the web for. Over the last 18 months, Kubernetes has become dominant compared to the alternatives. Now, KubeCon Cloud Native Con is where you can take the pulse of the community we're building. And wow, 4,000 people, other people around us, excited about what we're building together. And you'll see that 4,000 attendees is more than the previous four events combined. Now let's look at just a couple other community metrics. We have 120 meetup groups around the world with more than 47,000 members. And I want to give a shout out to the cloud native ambassadors who help lead these groups. 
Another measure of our community is training. Working with a group of experts from multiple companies, CNCF created a free Kubernetes course on MIT's edX platform. We've had over 16,000 registrants from 147 countries who will be able to leverage their new skills to improve their role with their company or get a better job and to enable the growth of our community. Now, when people in our community, including those who start with the edX course, want to be acknowledged for their expertise with Kubernetes, they can now become a certified Kubernetes administrator. This uses an online proctored exam, not multiple choice, but where you demonstrate your proficiency with real Kubernetes clusters. Over 600 people have already registered. At CNCF, we believe that business is an essential part of the open source ecosystem. Projects can be used to make products, which hopefully produce profits, which can be reinvested back into those projects. So let's take a look at one measure of company engagement. And uh, we can track the commercial interest in our community right here at KubeCon by looking at the 40 sponsors that we had a year ago in Seattle compared to the 106 here in Austin. And I hope you'll uh, visit many of them in their booths during the breaks. Now, speaking of our sponsors, let me thank the 22 diamond and platinum sponsors that enable us to put on this event. Yes, thank you. We couldn't do it without them. And wow, 22. <laughs> so another metric is membership in CNCF. You don't have to be a member to use or to contribute to a CNCF hosted project, which is why we're so appreciative of the companies that decide to, be, to help the community by becoming members. We had 28 members when we started CNCF two years ago. That has now grown to 160. And of that growth, the part I've been most excited about is the end user community. So these are just an amazingly diverse group of companies that are relying on CNCF projects. Another measure of commercial engagement is companies that can help end users succeed with Kubernetes. CNCF created the Kubernetes Certified Service Provider Program in September which is built on top of the certified Kubernetes administrator exam. And uh, we're thrilled to have uh, 25 KCSP partners. So last month, uh, CNCF organized one of the most successful ever conformance program launches, where we were working closely with the Kubernetes community to create the certified Kubernetes program, and we got all of the biggest public clouds and software distributions to certify. That's 42 companies have certified that their distribution or platform is conformant. Um, it's really uh, just an amazing group of, uh, of logos up there. So 2017 has been the year when companies of all sizes have become engaged with our community. In the last couple of months, CNCF has added 27 new mem silver members. And today, I'm th thrilled to welcome three new gold members. Baidu, one of the biggest internet companies in China, JFrog, a leader in software distribution platforms, and Salesforce, one of the biggest cloud companies and a leader in custom customer relationship management. Also this year, we brought in seven new platinum members. These are the companies that support CNCF and our projects at the highest level. And today, I'm pleased to announce that Alibaba Cloud has also become a Platinum member. And I'd like to welcome a Hong Tang of Alibaba Cloud to come on for a second. Thanks, Hong. Thank you, Dan. It's my great honor to be here. Uh, to talk a little, a, a little bit about Alibaba Cloud. Alibaba Cloud was founded in 2009, so it's about eight years old. So it currently is the number one cloud provider in China. 
with a commanding 47.6% market share. And we also are very thrilled to be the launch partner of the Kubernetes uh, certification program. We are currently operating in seven regions in mainland China and also nine regions across the globe. Um, our parent company, Alibaba Group, operates the world's largest e-commerce platform in the world. And just last month, in November the 11th, 2017, we hold a one-day uh, sales event called Singles Day Shopping Festival, and we achieved more than 25 billion US dollars sales revenue. Just put this in perspective, that's more than all the online sales in the United States from Thanksgiving Day and uh, the Black Friday, the weekend, and Cyber Monday all lumped together. At peak, we have to process 325,000 orders per second. Container technologies, oops. Container technologies has been used extensively both internally for Alibaba's own applications and also for our cloud customers. Uh, the e-commerce platform I just mentioned before is in fact a very large hybrid cloud application running on top of the containers. Uh, we leverage the elasticity of public cloud to handle the burst of workload and also uses containers to uh, support to get the portability of bare metal and uh, uh, cloud deployments. I put uh, very large in quotation marks because I think this is a gross understatement. It's probably, in fact, the, largest, the world's largest uh, hybrid cloud application. Um, at peak, we could provision 10,000 containers in 10 minutes, and also constantly we have more, hundreds of thousands of containers handling online requests. Um, in terms of uh, uh, cloud computing, our, current, our recent progress mainly included uh, uh, the integration of Kubernetes with our native infrastructure services like compute, storage, and the networking. Um, we, all the drivers are open source on the Apache license for easy integration. Um, for, on the uh, machine learning front, we provided a, a Helm template uh, for one-click deployment of uh, TensorFlow on top of Kubernetes. The performance is 30% faster in terms of training over vanilla Kubernetes uh, deployments because of the native integration. And among our early adapters include one of the largest social platforms in China. And also we did something in terms of uh, high HPC computing, high performance computing. Uh, we have integrated Kubernetes with our recently announced X-Dragon bare metal servers. And one of the killer features of the X-Dragon server is its, its network performance. It can sustain 4.5 million packets per second network performance. That's all from me for today. Thank you. Thanks very much, Hong. Thanks, Hong. That's great. So um, I would like to just talk about one new area for CNCF. Uh, we're having the first ever serverless track at KubeCon on Thursday. And uh, there's really interesting work underway in the serverless working group that I encourage you uh, to join and take part in. One uh, project that is uh, promising is open events, a common specification for describing event data. Now, let's talk about where uh, KubeCon Cloud NativeCon is going next. And uh, the answer is Copenhagen in May, and then we will be back uh, in Seattle one year from now. And the call for papers for Copenhagen is now open. Uh, we'd love to have many of you submit talks and, uh, and proposals for it. But we have uh, one more stop in between with the uh, involvement of Chinese uh, giants like Alibaba Cloud, Baidu, Huawei, Tencent, and ZTE, as well as many Chinese startups and end users of all sizes. The interest in Kubernetes and other cloud-native technologies in China is massive. And so in November 2018, we'll be bringing KubeCon Cloud Native Con to Shanghai. <laughs> Lastly, as we build our community, diversity and inclusion are core values. I agree. 
So in Seattle, a year ago, we offered diversity scholarships for three people. These cover registrations, hotel costs, and airfare. And then we were able to increase it to five scholarships in Berlin. But with the uh, growth of CNCF and um, our membership, uh, we had planned to invest in 30 scholarships here in Austin. And uh, so with contributions from Amazon and Twistlock, that was $70,000 that we were going to invest for those 30 scholarships. Uh, and so CNCF assembled a diversity committee to promote those scholarships. Let's welcome out that committee uh, who also select the diversity scholars from more than uh, 100 applicants. <laughs> now, um, I will mention that one frustrating part of the process was that four applicants who were selected from Cameroon and Nepal had their visas denied by the U.S. government. Um, but we will be offering them scholarships to attend KubeCon, CloudNativeCon in Copenhagen in May instead. Uh, but the bigger issue for the committee was that they didn't want to have to turn down 70 fantastic applicants. And so they convinced Google and Microsoft to each contribute an additional $80,000 for a total of $250,000 in scholarship funding. And to celebrate that, I'll ask Abby to come out, please. <laughs> So uh, note that we have to change the axis here in order to fit in that new column. We have 103 diversity scholars in the audience. And this is the largest investment in diversity, not just of a tech conference, but of all conferences. So thanks again to the diversity committee for your spectacular work. <laughs> Thank you.